Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our second membership series today. We have another one planned for Wednesday. If you have anyone in your club who has, uh, who has not attended today, again, we will have for the next two weeks, in addition to this week, we will finish our virtual membership summit series. Each week we'll build on the previous week until we have a complete set of knowledge at the end of this membership summit with a bonus week to follow at the end. So uh, thank you for joining us today. It will be unique material. The material will be repeated live at noon on Wednesday. So I want to thank you very much for attending. I've already heard some very good uh, compliments on the summit uh, series last week, including the highest compliment, which was a membership chair has already started implementing some of the ideas that he heard here a week ago. So thank you very much for joining. I want to thank Terry Weaver and uh, Carol Burdett. Terry's our district trainer and Carol is our district membership chair and Faith Line, who is our district administrator for their help with this series. I also want to thank our very special guest joining us today, Patrick Eats from North Carolina, who is the Zone 33 Rotary Coordinator. We are so happy that uh, Patrick is with us today. So thank you very much, Patrick, for joining. With this, I will turn the meeting over to Terry Weaver, who has the first segment in today's uh, series. Terry is a past district governor in 7750. He is also working on the Zone 33 membership team, and he is district trainer for our district. So Terry, thank you very much, and the show is yours. Thanks, Beth. I'm starting today with a couple of assumptions. First, that you've watched the membership dynamics video. If you haven't done that yet, I encourage you to do that when we finish up with the call. And I also assume you have your membership growth plan worksheet in hand, the one sheet that pertains to your club. Uh, as we wrap up this first segment, that'll provide some essential information for you in planning your membership strategy. So a quick reminder of where these ideas came from. A study of six years of data from 846 Rotary Clubs. And we had several discoveries, several of which I want to remind you of quickly. First of all, that likelihood of membership growth in a given year is not random. In fact, it's about 80% predictable that a club that's been growing will continue to grow and a club that has been declining will continue to decline. Then there are, of course, a few clubs sort of in the middle, kind of holding their own. Now, it'll be apparent to you in the next 10 minutes whether your club falls into this growth club group or into this declining club group. Growing clubs need to double down on the things that are working and declining clubs need to seriously reconsider the strategies that you've been executing up to this point because they are not working. So some essential lessons out of this. We lose members every year in a membership organization. Rotary is no different from any other membership organization. And uh, this attrition rate of about 14% for the zone and uh, now up to 16 for our district is, is right in line with a whole lot of things. Um, I mentioned on the video that the average trade association loses members at a rate of about 15% a year. I learned from one of our members that is in the property life casualty insurance business, uh, such as Allstate, State Farm, and so forth. Those agents turn over customers at a rate of about 15% a year. And then I went and chased this a little bit farther and found out that the average burglar alarm company, the average residential alarm company, turns over members at a rate or turns over customers at a rate of about 15% a year. So this attrition thing is not going to go away. All of those organizations, of course, plan for those turnover rates and have a plan to attract new customers at a rate necessary to uh, replace those that are leaving. This idea that there is a world-class level of attrition that is somewhere around the life happens level. And that is, seems to be right in the 8 to 10% range because not very many clubs are ever better than that, looking across, again, hundreds of Rotary Clubs. So that suggests that there must be a threshold right around 8 to 10% where we know we're going to lose those members. We can't do anything about it. And so anything above that is relevant to our diligent efforts with respect to retaining members. Below that, 
You just can't do anything about it. You have to have a plan to replace those. So the corollary to that is if your club has an already low attrition rate, down in that 10, 11, 8, 9% range, you're doing about as well as can be done at retaining members. If you're not growing, it's because you're not inviting people to join. It's not because you're losing members at an extraordinary rate. Likewise, on the flip side, if your attrition rate is above these averages, say above 15%, then there's something amiss with the product. There's some reason that your club is losing members faster than the average Rotary Club is losing members. And do keep in mind that all of the numbers we're talking about here are three-year averages. This isn't just something that happened within the past year. Everything you see in terms of an attrition rate or an attraction rate is an average of three years. Retention, essential as a membership strategy, overrated as a growth strategy. You can't retain your way from 20 to 25 members. And it almost goes up without saying, but we need to say it, particularly to our membership chairs and particularly to our membership committees. And that is that we have to attract members faster than we lose them. And the rate at which we lose them is somewhat predictable because we know what it's been over the recent past. So that's why your club's history is important. And that's why that's right up at the top of your membership uh, growth worksheet. So back to some really simple success targets. If, if a Rotary Club only remembered two things, keep your attrition rate below 15%. A 40 member club loses fewer than six members. Maintain an attraction rate above 20%. Plan for 20% of your members, 20% of your membership to be renewed each year. Meaning a 40 member club attracts a mem uh, minimum of eight members. If they mm -hmm. lose fewer than six, you can do the math, that club is growing. So what's essential to this next part, to the problem solving part of what do we do about our particular club's membership situation? We have to think about what's the PTS, what is the problem to solve? And the problem to solve is one of four. Either we're losing members too quickly, our attrition rate's too high, we're attracting members too slowly, our attraction rate is too low, or it could be a combination of both if our club is steadily declining in membership. Now, option number four is neither, because at least 25 to 30% of our clubs do not have a membership decline problem. 25 to 30% of our clubs are consistently and moderately growing. And of course, you know who you are. So I'd like you to pull out your membership goal setting worksheet and grab your ballpoint and let's do just a couple of quick exercises with this. The first of which I suggest you circle up at the top your attrition rate. Now this club that's on the screen in terms of a sample has an attrition rate of 13.6, right almost dead on the average rate of attrition for a Rotary Club in this part of the country. So this club is doing reasonably well at retaining members. They could get a little better, but not a whole lot. You know, they could reduce that to 10 or 11, but there's not much running room between 13.6 and 10 or 11. Then let's look at the next number, my club's annual attraction rate, the rate at which I attract members. Now this club on the screen, the sample, attracts members at a rate of 8.6% a year, which I could tell you in a heartbeat, just by glancing at this worksheet, that this club is declining in membership because it's almost a truism. If you're attracting members at a rate of fewer than 10% a year, you are going to be declining. Why? Because people leave at about that rate at a minimum. If that's, if that's as high as your sights are set in terms of attracting them, you can count on declining over time. And I wanted to show you how that plays out. Take a look down here at this club's membership history. This membership history just is a downward glide from 77 to 65 to 61 to 53 at the start of this year, July 1. This 5% net membership decline, which is the difference between the attrition and attraction rate, this 5% net membership decline is almost exactly three members a year, which is almost exactly the rate at which this club has managed its way down from 77 to 53 members over a very long time period. This didn't just, this didn't just happen the day before yesterday. So I'd invite you to do the math. 
take a look at your club's net growth rate, which of course you just subtract the larger or the smaller of the two attrition or attraction rates from the larger. The signage has been done for you. If it's, if we know already uh, for your club, whether that is a negative growth rate, which will be in the red or a positive growth rate, which will be in the blue. Then the question is, so what is the problem we're trying to solve? The problem we need to solve in this club is what? They're losing members at about an average rate. They could get a little bit better about that, but that's not the problem. Low retention is not the problem. Their problem, a big red X, is on insufficient new member attraction. Not only is their attraction rate lower than their attrition rate, but it's also below that 20% success target bogey. So if this club, on the other hand, were simply gaining members at a rate of, say, 10 or 11 members a year on a base of 53, instead of half that rate, this club would be growing. So let's continue on with your own club's goal setting worksheet. Let's just slide down the page a little bit and let's take, take a look at the numbers at the bottom. The first number is the membership goal in Rotary Club Central. Now, what you have on your sheet is you see your starting membership July 1st. In this case, for this club, it was 53. If that has changed between July 1st and August 6th this past week, that number is right here. So this is exactly where your club, unless you lost a member within or gained a member within the week, that's where your club is today. So the question is, does the goal that you have in Rotary Club Central still make sense? Is that still the right number? That's up for you. That's up to you to answer. Now I'm looking at this 53 member club. I, I don't even remember what the name is, but what I'm looking at is a membership goal of 60 from a base of 53, a net gain of seven for a club that is consistently historically lost net members every year. That seems like a stretch to me. Now, if this is your club and you're committed to 60, stick with it. If it were me, I was your assistant governor, for example, I might suggest you maybe feather that down a little bit to say 58. This is your opportunity to do that. You can change that goal in Rotary Club Central if you wish. So grab your ballpoint, place your bet in terms of where you think your club will be at the end of the year, July 1st, 2021, based on the starting membership in the first box or the current membership or the <coughs> membership goal that has been established. It's probably part of your president's uh, club planning guide and it was entered in Rotary Club Central as a result. So what is your membership growth goal? Then we do our first piece of math, which is what we wanna do is subtract B minus A, in other words, net goal at the end of the year from where we started for the number of members that we plan to increase, our net increase. In the case of uh, my adjusted goal for this club, 58 against 53 would be five. So how many members will it take to get the net gain that you're looking for if nobody quit? Which isn't gonna happen but it's an interesting idea. So then the second piece of math is we add together the, num the members we intend to net as a gain plus the members we need to replace. So if this club were to moderate its goal to 58 against a base of 53, we're talking about a net gain of five. Of course, they turn over an average of eight each of the past three years. So this club needs 13 new members to meet this membership goal of 58. I'll be happy to stop there and take questions either about methodology or specific situations. Just press your space bar to unmute yourself and, uh, and sing out. Anybody got a question? Anybody surprised? by the number of members that it's going to take to grow your club between the intended growth and the required replacement of your average member losses for each of the past three years.
Okay, so we've, we've established what the problem to solve is, whether it's attrition, attraction, perhaps neither, double down on what you're doing, and we've established some metrics in terms of the charge to the membership committee. What do we gotta do in order to bring in enough members to meet our goal and also replace those that will likely leave? Now, over the long term, as your club improves the club experience and becomes more sticky, then you can reduce that attrition number, but it doesn't happen really quickly. Keep in mind also that it will take about 10 targets to get three prospects into a conversation or into a meeting in order to get one member. This club needs to be talking to 130 people in order to meet its membership goal. That basically means we're going to have to have some strategies to make that happen. So the takeaways from this I'd hope for is that this attrition thing is real. You have to attract members faster than you lose them. Chronic membership decline is a leadership issue within the club. And if your club figures out that you may not be able to fix yourself, if, if this has been a deep seated problem for a long time, you may need some outside help from your district membership resources led by Carol Burdett. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to the man with the secret sauce. I'd like to introduce Patrick Eeks, the Zone 33 Rotary Coordinator, who's a past governor of District 7690 in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. He's also past president of the U.S. Canada Golfing Fellowship of Rotarians. He's a recipient of two high-level Rotary Awards, the Distinguished Service Award and Rotary's highest honor, the Service Above Self Award. He and his wife, Kristen, have two children, both of whom are active in Rotary projects. So pr please welcome my friend, Patrick Eeks. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Is that a thumbs up? Yeah, good, very good. I'm gonna get my screen share set up. All right, great. I like that. I got everything from a, from a peace sign to a hang tin. That's great. Thank you all. It is a, it's a treat to, to be able to be with you before. I don't think I've ever had the chance to speak in your district again. And even though I'm sitting in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be with you today, uh, even if it is remote. So we're going to talk uh, about intentional strategies, which are uh, proven strategies that your clubs can take to address just what Terry was talking about. Uh, during that, that first section there. But before we get into those intentional membership strategies, uh, or set the stage, if you will, uh, about, about this whole uh, area of attracting members to Rotary. Um, Terry showed you uh, the worksheet there that is highly predictive. As he told you, uh, about an 80% uh, accuracy each year, the trends tend to hold. Uh, and so when we say to you, hope is not a strategy. What we're saying is you have to be very intentional about what you're going to do in order to grow your membership. I promise you that you will not just accidentally get lucky uh, and have uh, everything just fall into place. It's, it's not going to happen. Uh, you're going to have to be intentional about what you're doing uh, to have that success. But the good news is if we're going to provide you with some tools uh, that will allow you to be successful. I also want to clarify, sometimes we are described or we even describe ourselves as a service organization, but we are a membership organization. Service is our product. It's what we do, but we are a membership organization. We have to think that way in terms of uh, taking care of our members, providing what our members want, uh, or they will vote with their feet, uh, and wave on their way out the door. So we have to focus on uh, being a top flight member organization, and then we can provide our product or service. So before we get into all the great things that, that uh, we know work and are proven methods, I wanna talk about some things that, uh, that don't work so well. Uh, and in your, uh, your resource manual you were sent, you can flip to pages one and two uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna take a look at some of these items. Club socials. Now I have been to many club socials that were intended to be membership events. 
I was happy to let someone buy me uh, a cola or a glass of wine. That was great. Happy to have nice conversation. I'm pretty extroverted. That's fun. That's great. But typically these socials, that's all they are is a social. There's no call to action. There is, uh, th th there's no specific call. And, and typically without that call to action, what you get is exactly that, no action. Uh, so want to encourage you to stay away from club socials. We will talk about uh, a gathering of prospective members that can be quite effective for you, uh, but it'll have a, a little different kind of, kind of setup for you. Inviting prospective members to a regular club meeting. That is one thing that I will never do, at least for a first introduction to Rotary. And why do I say that? Well, you walk into a Rotary meeting not knowing our rituals, not knowing our jargon, you see people praying to this blue banner with four statements on it. You see people talking in acronyms. You, 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 you see everybody pop out of their seats at the same time, sit down at the same time. Feels a lot like church, right? It's not the way to introduce somebody to what we're about, about the value of being a member. Uh, so we're going to talk about some ways you can introduce prospective members or target members to Rotary, uh, but I would not recommend uh, at least that first introduction to Rotary being at a typical club meeting. Incentives. Okay, incentives are great. You're buying a car. We all feel good about that. Feel like we got a little something uh, off the regular price, but it's not a way to sell Rotary. In fact, we don't want to sell Rotary at all. We want to be sure that we are conducting our clubs in such a way that we're going to attract members. What we want prospective members to see is the value of membership. And that can take place in many forms and probably multiple forms for most of us. Uh, be that personal development or professional development or the opportunity for service or networking or leadership opportunities, all the things that we value. I know I'm talking to a group of leaders today and you all, you already believe in the value of Rotary. But we want to be sure that we're not out there selling Rotary, that we're not out there running recruitment pitches, if you will, uh, with incentives. Because you really can't create a big enough incentive uh, to make that worthwhile for someone who might be interested in, in uh, Rotary or, or to tip them to, to be interested in Rotary. Similarly, uh, free or reduced dues for new members. You know, we'll talk about one scenario where that might make sense, but in general, to, to be a member of an organization like this is going to have some costs. It's going to have some dues. Uh, so we might as well be upfront about that and again, sell uh, or, or uh, make apparent the value uh, that Rotary can bring. Uh, podium announcements, newsletters, emails, all of these ways that are very easy for the person making the announcement to make a big broadcast and to send out a big broad message. But I can tell you that when I'm sitting in an audience and someone from the podium says, here is what we need to do, that washes right over me. There's no accountability. I have no accountability. I have no commitment. Uh, that person was not speaking directly to me, it didn't feel like. So I wanna try to stay away from that as a sole way of uh, bringing about membership growth. It can be part of a strategy and announcement, but we'll talk about some ways to, to make that more effective with follow-up later. Likewise, direct mail, print advertising, billboards, postcards, all of these things, again, generated are designed to generate a big, broad message, but I suspect that uh, most direct mail and postcards and such that I get, if I don't see a relative's name on it, I have a special container where I store those things, and I bet that you do too. Uh, so, uh, I don't want to harp too much on these things that don't work, but I do want to be sure, uh, because we all have limited time, that we're putting our efforts into the things and the strategies that actually do work. Now, I think all of you saw last week uh, a really cute and substantive video from Darren Hardy about being more than we have been so that we can accomplish all that we want to. And you see this quote, you must either shrink your dreams or expand your skills. Well, I'll tell you right now where I come from and I know where you come from, Rotarians don't shrink dreams. That's not what we're about. 
So we're going to talk about how we expand our skills, how we expand the portfolio of strategies that your clubs can have uh, to help you lead to that attraction so that you can reach that number that uh, where Terry just made you do math a little while ago so that you can reach that, uh, reach that number uh, where you want to be. So let's talk about the better way to move toward membership attraction. So on pages three and four of your resources, uh, you will see 10 proven intentional strategies. Now Terry, um, he, he told you all the ways he has verified uh, the numbers that he uses. And trust me, uh, over the time I have known Terry, he has made me a complete believer in those numbers. They are real these strategies we're going to present to you are real and they are proven and I have implemented all of them uh, with great success. So let's talk about a who do you know exercise. Um, this is covered in a little bit more detail on pages five and six. Now in the old days when we would do a who do you know exercise and I say the old days I've earned all this gray hair um, we would have phone books on the tables at Rotary, and we would flip through the yellow pages to help jog our memories about who we knew who might be interested in Rotary, uh, but was not yet a part. Today, we've gotten all modern, and we have mobile phones. Well, it's not showing up great there. Mobile phones. And with your mobile phones, you have your Rolodex. You have your whole world in there. There are computers that we can carry, carry in our pocket is what those mobile phones are. So at a club assembly, and this is important, at a club assembly, an actual dedicated meeting, because membership is that important, um, you can use those mobile phones to jog your memory about who you know who would be a great Rotarian and make a list uh, Terry mentioned the 1031 rule. Those of you who have been in some type of sales probably know uh, what that 1031 rule is, which is it takes about 10 leads to get three conversations about writing, three bona fide leads, and then out of those three, you're likely to get one member. So the quick math on that is for every member you want, you're probably going to need 10 leads, some type of referral, acquaintance someone on a list who you're going to approach. So just like Terry, I'm making you do some math there, but if uh, like with that sample Rotary Club, you're trying to gain 13 new members in your club, add a zero, that's about 130 leads that you're going to need. So um, you want to be sure that you announce that you're going to have this club assembly. You want members to know about it in advance. You want them to know it's important. It's not, oh no, another club assembly. This would be a great day to go clip my toenails instead of go to Rotary. You want them to know this is important. This is a day you want to be at Rotary and it's important for the overall health of your club. Be sure people know that that day is coming up. Remind them beforehand. We're going to ask you to generate contact information. We want you to be thinking about people who would be great additions to this club. People who are interested in their community, people who are interested in personal development, people who are leaders. Um, we can provide you with a who do you know worksheet and you can put those in the seats. You really want to get people in the flow of this entire exercise um, because this is your lead list. As a business, this would be your lifeblood, your, your referrals, your, your potential clients. It's no different for us. You want to have the right person in your club to establish the why. You want your inspirational speaker to talk about why Rotary has been so important in her life and why you should, you, we should all want to share that with our friends, acquaintances, our greater circle uh, of friends and uh, professional associates and why Rotary would be important for them and why they can bring something great to your club. That's where you want your inspirational speaker. So then you're going to get into the exercise. Who do you know who would be a great addition to this club? You can have people break up by table. Now, I know it's a little tougher in a social distancing kind of era, but you can still have people group to work on coming up with their lists and from there to, to choose their, uh, their primary targets. 
and you can you can go to work from there. Um, I don't want to I don't want to give this uh, too short a time, but but I do have a lot to cover, so I'm going to move on from here. But you do have a very detailed page five and six how to generate this list, uh, this who do you know list of, of people who are going to be your targets uh, for the Rotary year. I'll catch up here. Okay, prospect identification. Another way to generate prospects for your club are, are resources that are available, um, such as some of the websites like the Zoom Info and Info USA, as well as your local chamber who has professional listings. Um, you can think about, okay, which vocations do we not have in our club that ought to be represented? I'm betting that most of you have got an accountant. Most of you have got an attorney. Uh, you have some of those, you have a financial planner, advisor in your club. You're gonna have those ten, those sorts of people. You probably have some not-for-profits represented. Uh, but do you have people from manufacturing? Do you have people from clergy? Do you have people from, <clears throat> excuse me, funeral services industry or from construction? You can think about those vocations so that you can be sure that your community is well represented uh, and that you're not too concentrated in one area. And then you'll notice at the bottom of that slide, invite to a Rotary Information Hour. We are going to talk some more about that as well as next week. Now, I referenced before that a podium announcement, okay, it's great. It puts the topic out there. But if I make an announcement like that to you today, to all you that, hey, I sure hope you get an email from you later telling me what you got out of this session. I won't get an email from any of you because none of you is responsible to do that. I didn't reach out and say, Frank Cox, will you agree to send me a note later about how I could improve my presentation? You will? That's fantastic. Thank you, Frank. I am counting on getting that note from you later. That kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation with your club members is going to create the accountability that's going to give you a much better follow-through. Plus, it's a great chance to touch base with your members. Now, if you're in a club of 20 or 25, that's manageable for a president over a period of time. You do a couple calls, three calls a day, you'll be through it quickly. If you're in a club of 100, well, perhaps what you want to do is you might want to have your board or you might want to have your membership committee take 20 members each and do it that way. Um, but making those individual calls is very important to create that individual accountability and to help start building the culture that bringing um, prospects, at the very least, if not new members to your club, is just part of being a member of our club. So that prospect identification is um, quite important. Okay, now our number one method, this is number four is a Rotary Information Hour, sometimes called a Discover Rotary Hour. Either one is fine. Um, most clubs will do this about once a month. Some will do it every other month, but this is not a social. It has a social aspect to it, but it is not exclusively a social. And this is absolutely guaranteed a way to bring new members to your club. And it is detailed uh, more on um, page nine, of your resources. This will typically have a short social time just to be sure that everybody uh, has arrived, an opportunity for uh, some introductions, and then it's going to, to have a presentation about why Rotary is important, about what your club has done in its community, why in fact your club is vital to your community and very likely is integral to the history of your community all of the reasons that a person would want to be a part of your club. So that person walks out, not with a bunch of jargon, not with a bunch of acronyms, not seeing people get up and down out of their seats at a meeting, but they learn about what your club is, what it does, why it's important, and frankly, why those prospects should want to join your club. And I have been a part of many of these Discover Rotary or Rotary Informational Hours, and in my experience, done properly, 50% at a minimum, 50% of those prospects who attend will join your club. And I know clubs who do these particularly well, who will bring in 75% of those prospects who come to a Discover Rotary Hour. It is that effective. 
So you might think to yourself, okay, I'm going to have one of these every month. And perhaps we only have four people show up. In fact, the first one I was ever involved with, four people showed up. And I thought, wow, I wonder if this was, was worth it. Well, three of them joined my club. And I pretty quickly decided that was worth it. That was worth an hour of my time to help set that up. Now, again, you want to be sure, just as with your Who Do You, who do you Know <laughs> Club Assembly, you are reaching out to members. You are letting them know, here is the date. Here's when we're going to do this. This is why this is why it's important. You've created that accountability in generating a prospect list. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Now we're in a COVID era, right? So it's a little bit harder to get together uh, for one hour in person. You can do these just as we are meeting today. There are multiple clubs across both Carolinas right now that are doing that and are still having success. They are still finding that prospects, uh, in some ways, people are, are even more thirsty for connection with people, and they understand there's a heightened need in their communities for what Rotary brings to communities. So you can be just as effective uh, with this type of me meeting, with a Zoom meeting, uh, doing that online. So again, I'm not going to read uh, pages 9 and 10 to you because I know you can read, but if you come away with uh, nothing else from today, remember number four from this list of intentional um, strategies. Number five, drip marketing. Now Terry is an expert on this drip marketing module that is available within DACDB, the district database software that all of our clubs use and all, all our districts in this area use. There is a module that is included with DACDB that makes it very easy to have drip marketing. And, and what is drip marketing? Well, of course, it is just getting that touch with prospects every so often. So when you send a club newsletter out or you send an announcement out or you, you uh, let people know, hey, our big annual social is coming up, you can include your prospects on that list. So you keep Rotary in front of them every so often. I, I did, I drip marketed to a person I met um, many, many years ago, 15 years ago, on behalf of another Rotary Club. He didn't live that close to where my club met. But I kept saying, I wish you'd check out this club near you. Well, I just kept touching base. It was never the right time. He had a civic, uh, a governmental position, uh, elected position. He was quite busy. And lo and behold, after five years, he called me and he said, hey, Patrick, you know, you've been staying after me about Rotary. I said, yep, yep. I said, are you ready to, to visit the Clemens Rotary Club? He said, actually, no. He said, I just took a job and it's across the street from where your club meets. I'd love to come visit, but it's because I had kept marketing to him just a little bit. I didn't bother him, but every, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, he'd get a note from me about, hey, you know, I hope you're thinking about this. You're just the kind of person who'd make a great Rotarian. Uh, and I'm pleased to tell you, he was the, the first person I sponsored to became uh, a president of our club. So that, that has, story has a great ending, uh, was a super president for our club. But that's what drip marketing about is you want to stay in front of people. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, flexibilities. Now, council, council on legislation, that's the governing body of Rotary that meets every three years. So we're still talking about the 2016 council on legislation because it created so much flexibility for Rotary clubs. Um, it, 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 it is the body that said, okay, you no longer have to meet every week as a Rotary club. You can meet twice a month. Um, you can, if you want, meet once as a traditional type of meeting and you can meet for a service project for a second time in the month. Uh, it created uh, more flexibility in the types of members uh, that we can have join Rotary. It, it uh, provided all kinds of flexibilities and in 2019 when the Council on Legislation met, it only increased uh, that, that type of flexibility. So basically what Rotary has said is, we understand that you know in your community what works best. And why should we legislate to you a bunch of rules that get in the way of you doing Rotary the way it works best in your, um, in, in your area. So observe our four-way test, observe service above self, but otherwise in good taste, you implement Rotary the way you need to. So it, it provides you a lot of uh, flexibility. And we're gonna talk some more about that as we move 
Okay, so alternative membership types, some of what was created by that council on legislation. Corporate memberships, where perhaps you have a situation, I've seen this applied a number of different ways. I've seen um, a bank that says, we always want our branch manager to be in this Rotary Club and we're gonna set up a corporate membership with you. Smaller communities often will have people who come in and, and run a branch for a couple of years and then move to a larger market. And it's a great way uh, to build that relationship with that branch where you always have a member from there. I've seen mom and pop shops where there are two or three people who work in a business. They can't come to a lunch club, all of them, or they'll have to shut the place down. But they want to have that membership where one or the other can come to your meeting. And you can decide how you set up dues. Often, uh, often there is a membership and it allows for one meal each week. And then if additional folks come, they just pay for the extra meals. You can set that up, you have that flexibility. Family memberships work much the same way uh, where you can have multiple members based out of a single family. Um, service only memberships are becoming very popular uh, and I've seen clubs put this to great use where uh, perhaps a, it's a lunch club and a person lives nearby but works out of town but really wants to be involved with the service of that club. Well, they're charged some nominal dues to be a part of the club and on the days when they happen to be in town and able to attend and have lunch, they pay for the lunch that day, but it's not baked into the full uh, financial package to join that club. Uh, again, these are, these are creative ways that, that you can set up your clubs and your membership types. A YP35, a Young Professional 35, which often uh, acts like a junior membership at a country club or another organization where it might be a little bit discounted uh, but at age 35, they move to regular dues. So um, you have that kind of flexibility that has not always been in place in Rotary. More recently, uh, we're seeing a very strong move toward clubs uh, that are uh, organized a little bit differently than they were in the past. Interest-based clubs. There's actually a motorcycling club uh, in the upper Midwest where everybody in that club is an avid motorcyclist and that's how they came together and they're interested in service, they're interested in fellowship, they're interested in leadership. You know what? That's just fine. Calls-based clubs. Uh, there are multiple social justice clubs that are in formation right now. Uh, there is a veterans club that has been established and is thriving. Not all veterans in the club, but all people who are concerned with veterans affairs uh, with a healthy portion of the membership coming from uh, veterans. Satellite clubs. Uh, which hopefully by now you've heard about, but just in case, clubs that meet at a different time and location from the sponsoring club, what we might think of as a legacy Rotary Club. And those satellite clubs um, basically do their own thing. They might not meet on the same frequency, they may not have the same focuses, but they're attached to the sponsor club. And satellite clubs can be as small as eight uh, and be an official satellite club. And in many instances, clubs just have an alternate meeting time without being an official satellite club. And that works fine too. Uh, because what we're finding is, is lunch as, uh, as a time for clubs is becoming less and less attractive over time. People are busy in the middle of the day and uh, they do a little bit better uh, if they've got some flexibility there. Okay, and I've talked about the benefits of satellite clubs. I think I've already touched on this. Um, but that, that uh, is, is just another way to be flexible. Onboarding new members, very important. We know if we start a new job, how important it is in terms of orientation and those first impressions people have. Onboarding, orientation, the way people come into a Rotary Club is equally important. We know that we lose members at the highest rate in the first three years of Rotary. If we can keep them for three to five years, we generally are going to have them um, for the long term. So setting up solid onboarding is very, uh, very important. New member scavenger hunt. Now some clubs do the, use the red badge. If you use a red badge, could you raise your hand in your clubs? Yeah, and, and that's a way of doing onboarding. Uh, but some clubs will use a scavenger hunt just to, to keep it fun. Uh, some clubs set up passports where members do various things. They get their passport stamped. Uh, this is, I think you have available on page 11, um, is one way to go about uh, getting your members involved. Some clubs will take all the members that come in in a 12 month period and have them set up a new project for the club, a new service project, something that they own 
where they get that full investment uh, in their club. So there are lots of ways to do this, but what's important is that uh, as part of the onboarding process, uh, people understand the requirements of Rotary, uh, be that financial service participation, and they understand the benefits of Rotary, and then they get to experience that by, by diving in. Having some uh, guidance to do that, or even a one-on-one -on -one mentor with an experienced Rotarian is a good way to, to get that onboarding accomplished. Member retention. We talk about upgrading the club experience, and frankly, that has an impact for member retention as well as attracting new members. You've got to be sure that your club programs matter. They've got to be on topic. They've got to have a broad interest. You want really good speakers. Uh, you want people to think leading up to that, to your meeting, man, I got to get to the meeting this week because I know I'm going to hear something interesting or educational or inspiration, inspirational, something that's going to matter. Because um, as we say at the bottom of the slide, club members quit the club. They don't quit Rotary. They quit clubs. You got to be sure your club is not one that people want to quit. Keep that member experience up there. Rotary Club Health Check. This is a nice tool that Rotary makes available. Uh, My Rotary, which is our, uh, our member area of the Rotary International website, is down for a couple more days for some upgrades, uh, but you can get the health check from the address that you see there on the screen, or you can just Google it and you can pull it up. The Rotary Club Health Check is a good way uh, to assess your club on how you're doing, maybe uh, get some ideas for some ways you can add some sizzle to your club. I mentioned mentorship before in terms of membership retention. Uh, many clubs will assign one or two people to manage the onboarding of each new member. Uh, really important. And obviously you wanna be thoughtful about how you pair those mentors and mentees, uh, both in terms of style and being sure that you have a, a Rotarian who's the, the right person to act as a mentor. Meaningful service projects. Uh, so important, uh, many of us service is what uh, drives a big piece of the value for us in Rotary. Uh, so being sure that your uh, service projects, you're not just repeating the same ones each year, you're thinking about what's the most important in your community. And as I said, you might consider having your new members uh, come together each year to choose a new project that's meaningful for your club. It's a great way to be build some teamwork there. Okay, so we talked about prospect identification. That's uh, the who do you know piece. That is the classification and professional gap analysis. Uh, and we talked about certainly presidents making a personal ask uh, as we move into number two here, attracting members. Uh, the president making a personal ask of members or perhaps dividing that out am among a membership committee. And then we talked about the Rotary Information Hour, which is the absolute can't miss part uh, of the strategies that we're providing for you. It is number four, but it's number one in terms of your return on investment. Drip marketing, part of that attracting new members piece. Taking advantage of the flexibilities that Rotary has granted to us, both in terms of membership type and in terms of innovative types of clubs that can be established now. We talked about onboarding new members, the importance of a new orientation, uh, that scavenger hunt that we talked about uh, can be a key part of that. And then in terms of retaining new members, uh, upgrading the club experience, uh, the Rotary Club Health Check can be important, uh, an important tool in assessing your club experience. Mentorship, which is quite important and, and to me is still part of the onboarding process. Uh, and then also meaningful service projects, uh, absolutely uh, critical. So your takeaways, we talked about this. Rotary is a membership organization. Service is what we do, but membership organization is what we are. Intentional strategies. The Discover Rotary Hour, number one in terms of effectiveness. And next week, um, there's going to be a nice segment to talk about Rotary Information Hours, Discover Rotary Hours, and how to do those effectively. Uh, and I promise you, if you will put those into play, you're going to see a jump in terms of the way you are able to bring in new members. Satellite clubs or alternative meeting time clubs are a very effective way to grow your membership. Uh, so I hope that you will consider those. Terry spoke before, attrition is real. It is going to happen. 
every year there are a handful of club leaders who say, no, 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 we're not going to lose members this year. And then when May and June come around, bam, they get hit between the eyes because somehow they manage to get back to that 12, 14, 16% of their club that they've lost. It happens, take it to the bank, it's going, it's going to happen. Retention is for the long term. The, the things that we talked about to increase retention are great long-term strategies. And if you put those in place, they're also gonna help your attraction. Um, but in the meantime, and, and right now, the attraction piece is important. So put those intentional strategies into place. I mentioned members don't quit Rotary, they quit clubs. And that's true. Uh, if there is a good experience at a Rotary club, the members are not going to quit for reasons of the club. Yes, life happens. People move away. People pass away. Um, people hit incredible financial hardships that were unanticipated. There can be reasons that occur, but you want to bring uh, your club's attrition down to that minimum to strive for that 10% if you can get there, that world-class number. So much of membership is within your club's control. Uh, the clubs that take to heart these intentional strategies, who put them in place, can have huge gains in membership. Um, interestingly, uh, after three years of a membership summit in my own district, um, my own club finally put this into play over the last year. And our club went from 77 to 94 members. And on top of that, added a satellite club with 18 members above those 94. Huge growth. And it was all because I guess they finally figured I wasn't lying to them. They figured out if, uh, if we put these into play, if we use these intentional strategies, we're gonna have success. And they absolutely worked it just like a cookbook, just went right down the recipe and had great success. Finally, it's up to all of us to grow Rotary. I mentioned before, you might have a membership committee of five people, but truly everybody is a part of the membership committee. You have to realize that when you're in contact with people, you have an opportunity to share what Rotary has meant to you uh, and the value of Rotary um, that, that has been so important to you. So that makes you part of the membership committee. I'm going to stop my screen share. And then we can see each other again. I think we still have a few minutes. I'm sure that Terry or I would be happy to field any questions or your comments, because uh, I know we covered a lot of information there. Um, so would welcome any thoughts or questions you have? You can just hit the space bar or unmute yourself. Terry, um, Terry and Patrick, this is Rashika. Um, I have a question for you. Is there a, and I apologize if I missed this, is there a virtual model that clubs can follow for the uh, Rotary Information Hour? Since it's not something that folks can kind of sit down together and do at this time? Terry, you, you can speak to where you have it posted that people can refer to. Thank so you. our zone website, Terry has been good enough to post a sample. Okay. Uh, but, but he has posted both uh, a template PowerPoint that your club can use to talk about the importance of your club and how it fits into things, as well as a, a video of a sample Rotary Information Hour. Right. Our um, and Terry, you can maybe let me get, pull a chat up here. Um, maybe, well, the, the website for our zone where this is listed is rizones3334.org. And I just put that in the chat box. And if you go there, there's a handy dandy uh, search function and you just, you can just put discover Rotary and it will take you to those resources. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sure. And, it, and we're going to cover this next week as well. Patrick and Terry. <laughs> Patrick, this yes. is Pete Crandall, co-president of Spartan West. I'm, I'm a big believer in Discover Rotary, uh, and I hope next week I can get some insights. I'm, I'm not convinced that a Zoom Discover Rotary event is going to be all that successful. Terry, I'm interested to see how your club does it. But I, I've, I've not been real successful in getting my board excited about doing this on Zoom because our Zoom situation, we're, we're back to meeting in person and have been for two months. We're getting about 50% of our club there and the other half is attending, or a good portion of that is attending on Zoom. 
and it's it's a fiasco quite frankly i mean people drop in and out just like terry we couldn't understand what he was saying and the technology isn't there yet and quite frankly i think we need interaction in a discover rotary section session and it's hard to do with zoom if not impossible it's certainly more challenging i mean uh you know m most of us in rotary enjoy our time with each other uh, that's part of our value, certainly. I mean, many of my closest friends and the people I've met through Rotary, uh, it is challenging. But I do, I do know of clubs that are holding virtual Discover Rotary hours. I think Terry and Beth's club, in fact, is doing that uh, and is having success. But, but you may have to tweak the model a bit in order to find how it's going to be most effective. Uh, and I wouldn't hesitate to, to ask people who attend, you know, what, what worked well for you with this and what could we have done better? Good, thank you. All right, well, my wife always tells me that a little bit of me goes a long way, so I'm gonna mute myself now, and I'll turn it back over to uh, maybe to Beth or to Terry. Okay, thank you so much, Terry, and especially thank you, Patrick. I have found Patrick to be one of my best friends in Rotary. He is a great guy. You'll see him when you're at Carolina's Pets, and he does so much great work, so thank you for joining our district. Uh, tonight and we look forward to seeing you at, at noon on Wednesday. A reminder to everybody on here, if you have a membership chair or a president-elect or someone who would benefit from this session, we will have this same session live at noon on Wednesday. Uh, these sessions are also recorded, so at some point you will be able to share it with other people on your membership committees or whatever uh, that will be most helpful. So thank you very much. And again, for those of you who prefer Monday evenings, uh, same time, same place next Monday and the next, and then a bonus session the following the last Monday in August. So thank you very much. Hope you found this in both enjoyable and very helpful. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night.